All the pastors, theology students, and congregation members who are attending Shincheonji Online Seminar, testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings, it is nice to meet you. My name is Park Jungjin, and I'll be your MC today. Last time, we got to learn about the figurative water, spring, and river in Lesson 10. I hope you also confirm the meanings and the reality of the parables today and write them deeply in your hearts. Before we begin, let us offer up a prayer. Our Holy Father, the Lord of all creation, we offer up all thanks to you for allowing us to perceive the secrets of heaven through Shincheonji Online Seminar today. Please pour out your love, particularly upon all the attendees coming before your word from all over the world today, so they may perceive your will and heaven and fully realize their hope. Please help them to have good and noble hearts as a thirst and hunger for your righteousness. We believe you'll protect us from the evil spirits throughout this time as well. We are starting our seminar now. Please be with us until we complete this time of receiving your word. And in the name of Jesus, who shed his blood for our sins, we pray. Amen. We'll now begin learning about God's word through the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings, Lesson 11, the figurative sea, fishermen, net, fish, and ship, through instructor Kim Mingyu from Seoul James Tribe. To all the believers around the world whose hope is in heaven, nice to meet you. I am Kim Myung-gyu, a center instructor who's taught by the leader of the Seoul James tribe among the 12 tribes of Shincheonji. Our tribe leader was taught by the chairman of Shincheonji, Lee Man-hee. First, I sincerely welcome all the pastors, seminarians, and many members for attending the Shincheonji Online Seminar. I pray that your heart will overflow with hope for God as you hear the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. The topic of today's lecture will be the introductory Lesson 11 on the meaning of the figurative sea, fishermen, net, fish, and ship. I believe there are pastors who already know this content. However, I would truly appreciate it if you can kindly hear out the explanation of the word I'll be covering today. According to the natural principle of this world, just like how a fisherman throws a net into the sea to catch fish, we see the same content in the Bible being explained as a secret of the kingdom of heaven. How do all of you understand this content? Do you understand it literally? Or do you understand it in a different way? If it's about the physical sea, it is what we already know of without looking through the Bible. First, let me tell you the true meanings to today's topic. By borrowing the physical characteristics of the sea, the true meaning of the figurative sea is the world. The figurative fisherman is a shepherd and evangelist, and the net is the word of God, and fish refers to a person who is living in the world, a saint. And a ship is a church, an organization. We will confirm through the Bible why these answers are the way they are. 
2000 years ago, as Jesus was calling the fishermen to be disciples, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, I will make you fishers of men. Just like how a fisherman catches fish, a spiritual fisherman, a shepherd, will do the work of guiding God's people who are spiritual fish. Also, just like how there is a physical sea, like the Red Sea that the Israelites crossed when they came out of Egypt in the days of Moses, there is also a spiritual sea. Amongst the many things Jesus spoke figuratively regarding the kingdom of heaven, the true meaning of sea will be introduced to all of you today. Let's read about this parable in Matthew chapter 13, verses 47 to 50. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore. And they sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just, and cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. As we read this passage, doesn't this image come to mind? I'm talking about the image of a fisherman throwing a net to catch fish. If this content was talking about a fisherman throwing out a net, wouldn't that mean we would have to go to a physical sea to find where the fisherman is and get caught by a physical net to go to the kingdom of heaven? Would this really be the case? The kingdom of heaven is like a net that was cast into the sea and gather some of every kind of fish. This means Jesus hid the secrets of heaven through parables. Then why would Jesus speak in parables regarding the kingdom of heaven? It is promised in Psalm 78 that parables will utter hidden things but will tell the next generation. This promise was fulfilled in Matthew chapter 13, verses 34 to 35, when Jesus opened his mouth in parables to utter hidden things since the creation of the world. Another reason was to hide the secrets of heaven from the enemy, those who belong to Satan. However, the fact that we are able to share and hear about today's topic on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings shows there is a clear evidence that the time has come just as it states in John chapter 16, verse 25. So after all of today's word is heard, I truly believe all of you will be able to clearly perceive what the kingdom of heaven is that Jesus spoke of. What was the true meaning of the figure to see? Yes, that's correct. It's the world. But, in order to understand why C is the world, we need to first understand the physical characteristics of the sea. Fish are living in this vast sea, and it is a gathering of large bodies of water where many springs and rivers flow from. But, even if there are many waters gathered to the sea, it is not used as drinking water in our everyday lives. We can confirm through Daniel chapter 7 why the figurative sea is the world. As we see in Daniel chapter 7 verse 2 to 3, 
Prophet Daniel saw in a vision four winds of heaven churning up the great sea. Through the winds churning up the great sea, four great beasts came up out of the sea. Prophet Daniel, who saw this as a vision, was disturbed and asked the true meaning of all this to the one who was showing this vision to him. Then the angel came and explained in verse 17 that the four great beasts are four kingdoms that will rise from the earth. Where did this beast come out from? Yes, this beast came up out of the sea. Then what does this sea become where the beast comes out from that the angel explained? It's going to be the world. Then which spirit is ruling over the sea? Do all of you know? When you read Isaiah chapter 27 verse 1, it says, In that day, the Lord with his hard and great and strong sword will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, Leviathan, the twisting serpent, and he will slay the dragon that is in the sea. Where is the serpent and dragon? Yes, in the sea. When we understand the figurative sea as the world, would the serpent and dragon in the sea be a physical serpent or an imaginary dragon? As it states in Revelation chapter 20, verse 2, the dragon is an ancient serpent who is a devil or Satan. What this means is God's spirit is not ruling over the sea, but Satan, the devil, is ruling over the figurative sea, which is the world. Which is why in Psalm 74, verses 13 to 14, it says, It was you who split open the sea by your power. You broke the heads of the monster in the waters. In other words, God promised to judge Satan and the world Satan is ruling over. I will organize, again, the content of sea we just covered. The true meaning of the figurative sea is the world Satan is ruling over. Sea is a place where many waters are gathered. Then, the spiritual sea is a place where many spiritual waters are gathered. What did all of you hear the figurative water to be last time? All of you heard that the figure of water is referring to the Word. The reason why water is the Word is because by drinking water, we receive life, and through water, we are cleansed. Through God's Word, our spirit receives life, and because our hearts and actions can be cleansed, figurative water is the Word. Then even the spiritual sea, the world, is where many waters, many words are gathered. But because it's the world Satan is ruling over, figurative sea is a place where Satan's false teachings are. Words similar to the book of Daniel that we just saw appear in the book of Revelation which prophesies regarding the last days. Now let's read Revelation chapter 13 verses 1 to 2 to see how the prophecy is written. And the dragon stood on the shore of the sea, and I saw a beast coming out of the sea. He had ten horns and seven heads, and with the ten crowns on his horns, and on each head, a blasphemous name. 
The beast I saw resembled a leopard, but had feet like those of a bear and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. It says in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 to 2, that a beast comes up out of the sea. However, the appearance of the beast is very interesting. The beast has seven heads and ten horns, resembled a leopard, bear, and a lion. Have any of you seen a beast with seven heads, ten horns, that resembles a leopard, bear, and a lion? Or have you ever heard of such a beast that came up from the sea? An instructor who is very good at teaching will testify about this beast next time. Seeing that the sea appears in the book of Revelation, which prophesies about the last days, there is a world of false teachings that Satan is ruling over at the time of the Second Coming. And isn't the sea a place where many waters are gathered? As we see in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1, there is a prostitute who sits on many waters. A prostitute is one who is sexually immoral. Because the book of Revelation is a book of prophecy that speaks of what will take place in the future, this woman is a spiritual woman. All of you learned the meaning of spiritual woman. But just like how children are reared through the seed, which is the word, a spiritual woman is a shepherd who rears the saints. However, because this woman is a prostitute, she is a false pastor who has a relationship with Satan that rears congregation members with Satan's words. Then, what would the many waters be that the prostitute is sitting on? As we see in verse 15, the many waters are peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages. Peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages refers to the world of religion where many people and words are gathered. Figuratively speaking, it is a sea, the world. Then, when it says the prostitute sits on many waters, it means the false pastor Satan is one with is ruling over the world of false teachings. I will go over the main points of sea that I've explained so far. The sea is a world where words or doctrines are mixed. No matter how thirsty we are, we do not drink seawater, right? Like this, the sea water we shouldn't drink are false teachings of Satan. The fact Adam and Eve ate from the fruit of good and evil, it didn't end at just them eating the fruit of good and evil, but that they have followed Satan's spirit. Similarly, Carrying out a life in faith with false teachings is following Satan's spirit that gives false teachings. All of us should have the Bible as our standard and clearly distinguish between truth and lies. And I hope that we can all become the family of faith who carries out our life in faith according to the Bible.
Next, we will see the meaning of the figurative fisherman net and fish. The figurative meaning of fisherman is shepherd, the evangelist. The net is the word of God, and fish refers to a person who is living in the world. We will confirm through the passage, Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, why these answers are the way they are. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. As we have read in Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, Jesus said to the disciples, I will make you fishers of men. Fisherman is a person whose job is to catch fish. Therefore, it is said that fisherman catches a man. This man is in the same position as a spiritual fish. To be caught is to do the work of guiding. And a spiritual fisherman who is doing the work of guiding refers to a shepherd, an evangelist. But because Jesus spoke these words to the disciples, through the words disciples received from Jesus, there were spiritual fishermen who guided many to the kingdom of heaven. Also, a fish refers to a person. In Habakkuk, chapter 1, verse 14, it states, men are like fish of the sea. If we were to organize the word, Matthew chapter 13, verse 47 to 48, the sea here is referring to the world and the fish of every kind who live in the sea are referring to the many people who are living in the world. And the net that is used to catch fish is the Word of God guiding God's people. Have all of you met the net that is guiding you to the kingdom of heaven? All those who heard the Revelation Seminar and the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and the true meanings, you can say, Ah, I have met the net. I hope that we can all become the family of faith who go to heaven by listening to and confirming all the words of heaven that are tightly woven like a net. Next, I will speak about the figurative ship. When a spiritual fisherman is a shepherd, the ship where the fisherman works is the church where the shepherd works. But when you think of a ship in the story of the Bible, which character comes to mind first? For me, Noah comes to my mind first. All of you know so well what took place at the time of Noah. Because Adam sinned, Adam's descendants also committed many sins. To judge this world that was full of sin, a historical event took place where the flood came and saved those who were on the ark. The people did not believe in the words of Noah who was proclaiming the words of God that he heard from God that there will be judgment. But Noah, who was righteous, with absolute faith, built an ark and led himself and his family to the path of salvation in the midst of judgment. 
Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 to 39, But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Because Jesus said these words at the time of the first coming, the coming of the Son of Man is referring to the second coming when Jesus returns. So when Jesus returns, it will be like a time of when? Yes. Like the time of Noah. Then, what happened at the time of Noah? Judged by the flood, and fulfilled the work of salvation through the ark. Doesn't it mean that judgment and salvation will take place when Jesus returns? If so, what position do we need to be in? We shouldn't be like Adam's descendants who didn't believe or perceive up until destruction came. But when there is one who has received the word of God and proclaims, shouldn't we listen to the Bible, confirm, and if it is the word of truth, shouldn't we believe, obey, and go to heaven together? I truly believe we must all meet God's ship created according to God's word. Next, there are ships in the Bible that represent salvation like Noah's Ark, but there are also ships that are destroyed. We will read Revelation chapter 8, verses 8 to 9 to see how it is recorded. The second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain, all ablaze, was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. As we just read in Revelation chapter 8, verse 8 to 9, a third of ships were destroyed. What was a figurative ship? Yes, it refers to the church. Because it states the ships were destroyed, it means even among organizations like a church, they are destroyed. What would happen if ships are destroyed? Seawater will enter through the crack and as a result, the ship will sink. If the sea is the world of false teachings that Satan is ruling over, when the ship sinks, doesn't it mean that this ship has become one with Satan? Therefore, we must find God's ship that are like Noah's Ark and not ships that are destroyed. Next, I will explain the figurative sea captain, all who travel by the ship, sailors, recorded in Revelation chapter 18, verses 17 to 19. If the sea is the world and ship is the church, what would the captain, all who travel by ship and sailors be? What did all of you think? The captain who holds the helm of the ship and sails the sea is in the position of a pastor who leads a church. And the sailors who work on the ship helps the pastor of the church, referring to people with duty. And the passengers are referring to lay members who go to church to go to heaven. So it's not about just getting on the ship, but shouldn't we make sure we find the right destination? To get to our destination, which is heaven, we must carry out our lives of faith with the Word of God. And all who earn their living from the sea, the passengers, are referring to church members who go to church to go to heaven. So it's not about just getting on the ship, but shouldn't we make sure we find 
the right destination. In order to get to our destination, which is heaven, we must carry out our lives of faith with the Word of God. The words we have seen so far, the figure to see, fisherman, net, fish, and ship, are all spiritual. But when we explain the spiritual meanings in the Bible, it is always divided into two types. The reason why is because there are two types of spirits. There are two types of words. And because of this, there are two kinds of people. Even the sea that was introduced today, there are two types of seas. One is God's sea. The other is Satan's sea. God's sea is a sea of glass in front of God's throne. And Satan's sea is the sea the dragon is ruling over. Which sea do we need to meet? Shouldn't we meet God's throne, the sea of glass in front of God's throne? In order to do so, shouldn't we know what this sea of glass is? God's throne, the sea of glass that is clear as crystal, refers to the Word of God that is flawless. In order to know where and what this sea of glass is, we will read Revelation chapter 4, verse 6. Also before the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. Revelation 4, one of Jesus' disciples, Apostle John, heard Jesus' voice in a vision and went up to heaven and saw all of God's throne organization, and order in a vision. As he went up, he saw God's throne, the 24 elders, and before the throne, seven lamps were blazing, which are the seven spirits of God. Also, in the center around the throne, were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes all around. There is also the sea of glass. If Satan's sea is the world of false teachings Satan is ruling over, God's sea of glass that is clear as crystal and clean refers to the Word of God that is flawless. We should not drink Satan's seawater, but shouldn't we wash our hearts with the words of the sea of glass and become holy people who can receive God? God is not just going to leave the sea, the world that Satan is ruling over, to be. He planned in advance to heal the sea by making a promise through the prophet who foretells what will take place in the future. Let us read where this prophecy is in Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 1, and verses 8 to 10. The man brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the temple faced east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. He said to me, This water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah, where it enters the sea. When it empties into the sea, the water there becomes fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish. Because this water flows there, it makes the salt water fresh. 
So where the river flows, everything will live. Fishermen will stand along the shore. From En Gedi to En Glaim, there will be places for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the great sea. In Ezekiel chapter 47, from the entrance of the temple, water flows out, becomes a river, and heals the sea. If this temple and the water flowing out of the temple was physical, we would need to fix this temple right away. But this is a prophecy and speaks of things that will happen in the future in parables. So this temple is a spiritual temple. Last time, what did all of you learn the parable spring to be? A spring is where water springs up from. Then a spiritual spring is referring to a shepherd where spiritual water, the word, flows from. As we can see water flowing from the temple, we can say this temple is a spiritual spring. When this word fulfills, the water that flows from this temple is referring to Jesus who gave God's word. Jesus gave these words together with the disciples testified regarding the prophecy of healing the sea and gave the word in advance. If you read Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14, it says, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. When water is the word, wouldn't this mean that the earth will be filled with God's word? Also, in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 9, it says, They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. With what and where will be full? It says the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. As we read this, in order for the glory of the Lord to be shown, I am reminded of the pastors who put in all their efforts and hard work. Because of the hard work and efforts of the pastors, many people around the world believe in God, believe in Jesus, the Son of God, believe in the gospel, and live a life of faith. I believe because God knows all your efforts and hard work you put in. He has called you here. Now is a time where God's revealed word can be clearly spoken and heard. Just like how the waters cover the sea, I hope that we can become one so God's word of truth can fill the whole earth. When you read Revelation chapter 21, verse 1, it says that I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. What would the first heaven and the first earth be that passed away? 
The first heaven and first earth do not refer to the earth we live in. What it refers to is a dwelling place of the chosen people that God has chosen first will disappear. What does it mean? There was no longer any sea. What do all of you think about this? Because the sea is a world of false teachings, when it says there was no longer any sea, it means the world of false teachings no longer exists. Also, the content we saw earlier in Revelation chapter 13, the beast with seven heads and ten horns came up out of the sea. This beast came out of the sea and blasphemed God and the saints. Because God judges the beast and its organization and its dwelling place that was destroyed, that's why he says there was no longer any sea. I believe the world filled with the knowledge of God's word will come and the world of false teachings will completely end and disappear. Next, let's read the parable of Matthew chapter 13, verses 47 to 50 to find out what good fish is in the kingdom of heaven. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore. And they sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just, and cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Inside the words of Matthew chapter 13, verses 47 to 50, it says, The kingdom of heaven is like a net that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind of fish. A spiritual fisherman throws a net of the word into the spiritual sea to catch the people living in the world. But, just because a fisherman pulls you out of his net doesn't mean all the fish get put into a vessel. The good fish are gathered into the vessel, but the bad fish are thrown away. This isn't referring to little fish, right? It says it will be like this at the end of the age. The angels will come, separate the wicked from among the righteous. The good fish are the righteous, and the bad fish are the wicked. Who are the righteous? Wouldn't it be those who know God's will and act according to God's will? So we who met the net of the word of heaven in order to become this good fish, we must become God's family of faith who obey the word. Next, I will explain the conclusion of today's word. By borrowing the physical characteristics, the figurative sea is the world. Fisherman refers to the shepherd, the evangelist. Net refers to the word of God. Fish refers to the people living in the world, that is a saint. And the ship refers to the church and the organization. The fisherman drew to shore what was caught and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, 
but threw the bat away into the sea. Because we are the saints who have been guided by the word like a net, we must be completely born again to become a good fish that can be contained in God's vessel. And together, put forth the effort to be qualified. To all the believers around the world, let us all perceive the secrets of heaven. Jesus said, if you do not know about the kingdom of heaven, if you do not understand the words of this parable, you will become an outsider your sins will not be forgiven and you cannot go to heaven. Now is a time when everyone can clearly perceive the words of God. It will be good if we can all confirm today's words regarding God's kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, is so that we can be caught by the net and become good fish gathered into the vessel. The next time, an instructor who teaches a word really well will tell you about the figure of beast, head, horn, and tail. Were you curious about the beast that came out from the sea? If you attend next time, all your questions will be answered. We are all one in God, in Jesus, and the Word. Let's proclaim that we are one together. We are one. Let's pray together. Thank you so much, Holy Father God, who is full of love and grace. Thank you so much for granting us this blessed and precious time today, allowing us to meet families of faith through the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and the True Meaning Seminar. Thank you once again for allowing us to meet the revealed word of truth that Jesus hid as a secret regarding the kingdom of heaven according to God's promise. I believe that there is one God, one Jesus, one Bible, and all believers have the same hope. Now let us who believe in God become one in heart through the word of God. Please make sure that there is not a single person in this world who does not know God and His Word. Just as a fish living in the sea meets a net and are pulled up, please help us to meet the net of the Word of Heaven, be guided by it, become good fish, and together go to the Kingdom of God. I sincerely hope that everyone who heard these words today, that there isn't a single person who didn't perceive, and that all will enter the kingdom of God in good health, both physically and spiritually. And I pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you to everyone who has been joining us at the seminar. What is the reality of this beast? The beast we can imagine here cannot possibly come out from the sea. And we already know that there is no beast that has seven heads and ten horns in real life. Then, what is the reality of the beast mentioned in Revelation chapter 13 verse 2? Let's find out now. As you've just seen, the topic of our next seminar on Monday will be Lesson 12, The Figurative Beast and the Head, Horn, 
and tail. It will go live at the same time as today's seminar, so please do attend to attain our hope of heaven. Shinshanji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and Their True Meanings, is being broadcast live to the whole world via the official YouTube channel of Shinchanji Church of Jesus in 24 languages. If you have any questions about today's lesson, Shinchanji Church of Jesus, or our teachings, please contact the numbers you see on the screen now. And these are the main numbers to each of our tribes. We'll make sure to guide you kindly. We'll complete today's we'll complete today's Shincheonji online seminar with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you everyone for being with us today.